So until now, we already built a lot. Our application now looks like this, which of course is not how it looks in the beginning or what we want to reach at the end. And also we can't really add something to the collection. All we get is this alert and this red button doesn't do anything. We also don't have routing. It might look like a lot is missing, but actually we're on the final steps to finish this application. Now I want to focus on being able to actually add something to the collection. For this I'll add a new concept which we haven't seen yet, a service. A service is basically a class which can be used by multiple components. We can use a service for multiple purposes, for example to outsource some code which we want to use in multiple components, or as we will do here, to manage our data in one global place where then multiple pieces or spots in our application have access to. So this is how we can use such a service. And I will create it in the shared folder since it will be shared by both my collection component and the market component. So whereas normally you try to structure your application by feature, sometimes you have to put something in a shared folder because it really is shared. So how do you create a new service? We could use the CLI for this, but as creating a service is really, really, really easy, I will create the file on my own in the shared folder. I'll give the file a name of collectible.service.ts to follow this naming convention that we have the name of the thing we have in the file first, then a description of what we have here, a service, and then of course the file extension. So this will create a new TypeScript file for me. And in this service, I will export a TypeScript class to make it available outside of this file too named collectible service. So this already is a service, a normal TypeScript class. It doesn't need any decorator by default. This is what we can use as a service. I will show you how to use it soon. As I already said, I want to use this service as my global data repository. Therefore, I will take my collectibles I have here in the market component and I will now store them in this service. So here I'll create a new private property collectibles, which will be, well, this array I just copied out of my market component. Of course, I'll soon create a way to now get these collectibles from this service into my market component. But before doing this, let's consider improving our application here a little bit. This would work, it worked before, but since each collectible here has the same structure, a description and a type, it would make sense to kind of create a blueprint for this, kind of our own type which we can use in TypeScript here to make sure that whenever we use such a collectible, we know that we have these two fields available, that we get an error if we try to introduce a third field or forget one of these fields. For that, I'm going to create a model and that is something you'll see a lot in applications. Here I'll name it collectible model.ts and in here I will basically define how such a collectible should look like. So here I will export this class collectible uppercase or beginning with the uppercase C at least and in here I simply want to define how it should look like. I do this by adding two public properties. The first one is named description and should be of type string. The second one is named type and should also be of type string. And then I'll add a constructor where I am able to initialize them. So here I'll get my description as, an, as a parameter which is of type string and my type which is of type string. And here in the constructor body I simply hook my properties up with these parameters, like this. So what I did here is basically create a TypeScript class with two properties and a constructor where I initialize these properties. If that is all new to you, I recommend having a look at some basic TypeScript resources. This is as you also use classes in a lot of other languages though. So with this collectible cr class created, I can now be more explicit about this private collectibles property here. I can assign a type to it and I can say that this should be of type 
collectible array. Now for this, you need to add the import to your collectible model here from collectible.model. But with this, I now make sure that I know for sure that this array will always hold an array of collectibles. I can't mix in any other object. This will give me, this will give me better IDE support regarding auto completion and it will also prevent me from introducing some nasty bugs. So with this setup, it's now time to also work on a way to get the data in the service back into the market component. Right now I have my collectibles array here, but let's remove it now. Well, now all of a sudden, if we save this, our application will work. But once this reloads, we'll see that our market is empty. Certainly not what we want. Instead, we want to get this data from the service. And to be able to do so, I'll add a method. I'll name this method get collectibles. And all this method should do is return my collectibles array here. Now with this setup, I can go to my market component and now I'm going to use the ng on init method here. This method is executed when Angular 2 creates this component. It is executed once all properties are initialized, so here it is safe to assign values to my properties. Therefore, I'm choosing this place to use my service to get the data. But in order to use my service, I also need to have access to it. Now, getting access does not work by instantiating here. You could think that I would simply run new collectible service. This is how you instantiate classes in TypeScript in the end. Well, we could do this, but Angular 2 has its own dependency injector. Now, this is kind of a framework in the framework for handling the creation of instances of classes we need in our application. We already use it since we are using components which are automatically created by Angular 2. But we can also tell Angular 2, hey, when you create this component here, I also need to get access to this service. And here we kind of use the Angular 2 magic. We can do this by simply adding a property in the constructor here. So I will write private collectible service. And this is just a shortcut to automatically create a property and initialize it with that value here. So if I add private, it will do this for me, create this property automatically and assign the value. So here it is, and now the important part comes. I set the type to collectible service, which I also need to import at the top of this file, therefore. With this setup, Angular 2 will recognize that once it creates this component, hey, the constructor needs an additional argument. It has a look at this argument and it sees collectible service. So now it tries to create an instance for us and give us this instance, which is a good practice to do in this way, as it keeps your code cleaner and easier to understand. It also offers other advantages. I'll come back to this. So it tries to create this collectible service, but it of course encounters an issue. As before with the selectors of components, for injection, it also doesn't scan all files in our project. That would again be a real bad performance hit. Therefore, we have to tell Angular 2 which parts of our application should you be able to create when we want them in the constructor like this. We do tell Angular 2 either directly here in the component by adding the providers array and adding collectible service here. Or in this case, we would get an instance exclusive for this component and all its nested components. Or we go to app module and add it here, collectible service. This will also result in Angular 2 being able to create the service for us but now it will use one and the same instance for our whole application. Whereas before, if I added it here, we would only have an instance for this component and its child components. This is another advantage of the injector. We can choose if we want one instance for the whole application 
or only, well, the instance for this component and child components. What's the advantage? Especially here, where we manage our collectibles and later on our collection in one service, we definitely want to have the same instance all over the application. Otherwise, if we would have two instances, we would have two different collection objects and our application would not work as intended. So, a lot of talking, but this is important to understand. Dependency injection really is important. And I got other videos on this channel if you want to learn more about it. With that set up, we can now finally go to ngon init. And here we can set this collectibles, so this property and this component, equal to this collectible service, get collectibles. Now with this in place, if I save this and let this application recompile, once it reloads, you see the components or the collectibles are back. I can still click on the buttons, but now we're managing, managing the data in a service, which is a common pattern you will see and which we will need when we as a next step also add a way to pass them to our collection and create a collection finally.